Welcome to all of you who are considering a change in your health coverage. For the first time, we are offering these three video information sessions to help augment and fill in the gaps between the information offered by PEB and the insurance companies, particularly regarding how to compare and contrast the many options available to you. These sessions are useful for a wider audience, but they are specifically designed this year for retirees getting their insurance from PEB, the Public Employees Benefits Board. Particular emphasis will be given to retirees with the popular Uniform Medical Plan, which has had a 46% cost increase over the past two years. And I'm your moderator, Matt Groshon, a retired Public Employees Council member since 2015. Before that, I worked for two community colleges. I'm the chair of the RPEC Healthcare Work Group and president of Chapter 3 in Seattle. I'll be our speaker asking clarifying questions during our time together. Last year at this time, this is what's most important to me, is I was personally wading through researching all of the PEB retiree plans since the cost of uniform medical rose so much. And sometimes I was overwhelmed with the complexity of understanding PEB's open enrollment guide and the materials from the insurance plans. And that's why RPEC is offering these presentations to you to ease the process of researching your health insurance options. I wish I had had these training sessions last year. So in summer, Lori Widener, the RPEC Executive Director asked Tim Smolin at Sheba, who you see on the screen, in the Office of the State Insurance Commissioner, if he could develop these presentations for us, and he most graciously agreed. So Tim, RPEC, and the Washington Education Association retired, worked together on what you will see and hear over a total of three video sessions. Thanks so much to Sheba and WEAR. So, in advance of open enrollment, beginning November 1st, I'm pleased to introduce our expert presenter, Tim Smolin, the program manager of the Shiva program, whose trained volunteers help people like us figure out the complexity of the retiree insurance world. Tim is the Shiva program manager in the Consumer Protection Division of the Office of Insurance Commissioner. The SHIBA program is responsible for helping people with Medicare to understand their rights, protections, and options, and I personally love SHIBA and I've used them myself. Tim says the best part of his work is knowing the impact of helping people in terms of saving them money and also in terms of putting their mind at heart at ease. Tim has wide experience working in various Washington state agencies, including the Healthcare Authority and also private insurance companies. In other words, Tim knows his stuff. With this, Tim, I hand the virtual podium over to you. Oh, thank you, Matt. That's a very gracious introduction. And let me just, again, acknowledge Lori's leadership um, on behalf of our PAC and our friend Leanne Prelip over at the WEAR. Um, and obviously, you and I have worked together for several hours to put together this program. So I'm looking forward to sharing the stage with you. Um, I think nothing could be worse than me narrating this PowerPoint slide deck for an hour. So, uh, you know, I hope what we're going to offer the audience is a little bit of byplay between you and me as we work through this. Uh, this program is a bit rough, so apologies. Um, but it's, I, think it, it, I think it will stand up um, to some scrutiny. Uh, I'm going to try to be as candid as I possibly can, um, considering the complexity of the materials and the fact that uh, really, this work um, doesn't belong to our agency per se. As Matt said, this is the work of the Washington State Healthcare Authority and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and the Social Security Administration. But the SHIBA program, as Matt said, is really intended to help people navigate Medicare and other insurance programs besides Medicare. And so we're very, very grateful for the invitation. Um, and of course, we want you to reach out and use our services. And I want to, um, as Matt said in his introduction, really stress that there are terrific resources available from the HCA, from the plans that contract with the HCA, from the Medicare agency, uh, through the Social Security Administration. We'll talk about uh, DSHS as well. 
as we talk about extra support for low income people. Um, so I, I think that the hopeful message is that there's lots of support out there as you uh, navigate through these uh, choices and changes. I'm gonna try to manage my own slides a little bit, be my own producer, so just bear with me here, uh, please. As Matt said, uh, I'm Tim Smolin. I'm the Shiba program manager. My contact information is on the screen for, for you, for those of you who are watching um, and listening. I want to acknowledge that I am identify as white, male, cisgender, heterosexual, and married. I'm 60 years old, which you can see in my graying hair and beard and my calm demeanor. I'm coming to you from my offices in uh, Tumwater, Washington. Uh, I'm wearing a pale blue shirt with a red check tie, and I've got a pale yellow background. Um, as Matt said, this is going to be uh, the first program in a series of programs. We designed it this way just to try to manage some of the complexity of the program, uh, and also to um, really, it, and I'm repeating again what Matt said, in the first program, have a very sharp focus on what are the uh, for a person who's ready to take action, uh, what, what are the top of mind considerations for a person who's currently enrolled in the Uniform Medical Plan and considering making a change at this point in time? Um, in the second program, we'll talk more directly about how to uh, affect that change if you're ready to do that. And in the third program, we'll zoom out just a little bit to provide some context for um, kind of why are things um, as Matt says, as complicated and difficult as they are, and a little bit of a forecast about uh, what comes next for uh, Medicare, the program in general, and um, for people who are working in or retiring out of uh, state government or other local municipalities that are uh, part of the PEP system. So we're going to, um, and as, as I said, Matt and Lori and I spent a considerable amount of time uh, working through these programs. The audience here is, is really meant to be a general audience. So for some people, this may seem a bit rudimentary. So apologies, and you can certainly engage with Matt for a more complex program. But we want to make sure not to um, go uh, so far so fast that uh, we, we neglect the people who are, are less uh, conversant with these complex um, topics. And um, as Matt said, we're really going to focus on um, the HCA uh, PEB portfolio and the Uniform Medical Plan, but hoping uh, in all the programs that we provide enough of a general education that you can see how this works if you're in another plan in the PEB portfolio or if you're in another retiree plan other than the HCA PEB portfolio, or simply if you're a person who's in Medicare and your other insurance besides Medicare is not even related to uh, the place that you use to work at. So hope, hoping for a broad enough uh, focus to be accessible and interesting to a general audience, but really focusing on the folks who in the short term um, want to um, do some problem solving about their uniform medical plan insurance uh, through PEB. Um, and let me just acknowledge at this point that um, I'm going to... Um, uh, finesse some complex issues. Um, so I'm, I'm going to glide by a few of the details. I'll try to acknowledge those um, as I do that. Um, I, for sure, not meaning to slight uh, any person or any of the choices uh, or any of the complexity, but just so that we can kind of maintain our focus and have a little bit of continuity, um, maintain some momentum, I am going to, um, forgive the expression, cut corners a little bit but Matt is going to be here to um, uh, kind of like he, he, he's the sheepdog and I'm the sheep and he's going to like keep me on the uh, path here. Um, and of course, um, after you hear this program, please reach out to RPAC uh, or HCA, WER or the SHIBA program um, so we can kind of connect the dots or, or clarify any of those um, places that I uh, misspoke um, or, or misrepresented something. So expressly in this first program then, what are the general options for Medicare retirees with Uniform Medical Plan? What are options inside the PEB portfolio of plans? How does PEB coverage work with Medicare in general? And how can I get help with any uh, questions uh, that I have? Um, 
the reason that we're really going to focus here, of course, and Matt said this, is because of the dramatic increases in premiums for the uniform medical plan that we saw for calendar year 2023 and that we're going to see for calendar year 2024. Um, and two points make a line, right? So we're concerned about the trend about where is um, uniform medical plan rates and coverage going in the future. So obviously we have sort of arrested people's attention. And um, so let's take advantage um, as my uh, old colleague and friend from the HCA, uh, Richard Onisaka used to like to say, let's don't uh, waste a crisis. So let's talk about the SHIBA program for a moment. The SHIBA program is a service of the Office of Insurance Commissioner, Mike Kreidler. Uh, our acronym is Statewide Health Insurance Benefits Advisors. We are a free, confidential, and unbiased service to help Medicare beneficiaries, families, and friends, and advocates to navigate Medicare and other insurance. As Matt said, most of the substantial work of the program is done by volunteer advisors who are trained by our professional staff. We have about 225 of those around the state. Obviously, we're always looking for more people who would like to help their friends and neighbors. So if you're interested in joining us as a volunteer, we would certainly welcome you. And we are also the Senior Medicare Patrol Program for Washington State, which means that we focus on prevention, detection, and reporting of fraud in the Medicare program. Our program has been around for 44 years. We'll have 45 years next year. We were the first in the country program like ours, and now there are programs like ours in all of the states and territories. They go under the umbrella term of Senior Health Insurance Assistance Programs. So you will have seen the SHIBA program and our phone number and website in your HCA PEP materials. Uh, our uh, contact information is also published in the Medicare and You handbook that gets mailed to you every year. And if you're helping someone who lives in another state, you can find the information for programs like ours um, to help them in the places where they live um, as well. And I'm doing that thing where I advance my own slides. So let's talk about um, kind of level set where we're at with a uh, uniform medical plan in particular. Um, uniform medical plan round numbers has about 40,000 individuals enrolled uh, as Medicare retirees. So it's approaching half of all Medicare uh, retirees in the PEB portfolio. In general, most of them are long-term enrolled and very satisfied. And so for the most part, they have never really considered other options inside the PEB portfolio. As Matt said, having faced a second year in a row of double digit rate increases, people are worried about what does this mean for me in the short term as premiums are over $500 a month and what does this mean in the long term? Today, we'll talk about what does this mean in the short term and in later programs, we'll talk about long-term concerns. Hey, uh, Tim, yes, yes Tim, sir. I, yeah, I would also add that Last year, uh, there were, I don't know the exact number, but there were thousands of um, of uniform medical members who switched to a different plan in PEB. Uh, and I think that was unprecedented, uh, or at least if there was a trend like this prior, in prior history, it's been quite a while. So I, th I think it's safe to say that you're right that a uh, 46 percent in uh, premium increase over two years uh, makes people stand up and and pay attention. It certainly got mine last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that, Matt. Yeah, it's it's a bit um, it is a bit unprecedented, right? I mean, I think what what the Medicare data generally say is that um, almost no one in Medicare considers making a change year over year. Um, in their insurance. Um, and of the people who do, very few of them end up making a change. And most of the changes that happen are from one Medicare Advantage plan to another one, um, which is, you know, honestly, it's a little disappointing and a little concerning. You know, as, as you said in your introduction, we work in the Consumer Protection Division of the Office of Insurance Commissioner. And so 
you know, we really want people to be aware of their rights and options and what their protections are. Um, the Medicare program obviously changes year to year. Each person's individual needs change year to year. And, you know, we're talking about private insurance companies that contract with Medicare. And so they have their own changes year to year, including things like the benefit design, the coverage, the cost sharing for enrolled members. And so, you know, we really feel like it's important um, acknowledging it's effortful. We think it's important to make a, a little time and, um, you know, kind of take a moment to reflect on what your needs are and how they'll be best met um, in, in the year ahead, right? Yeah, I'd like to add that last year, um, last October, November, just as background for everybody watching, uh, I went through this process that you are entering now. So I really do... Um, I think I have a pretty good idea about how some of you feel. It was it was effortful. Indeed, it was effortful uh, because the US insurance, health insurance system for Medicare folks is uh, complex, but uh, I'm glad I did it. And uh, this year there's going to be more help available uh, than there was for me last year. Uh, not only through this, but Sheba is available and uh, we're gonna be giving you tools. Tim will be giving you tools on how to contact the plans, how to contact HCA uh, timelines and so on and so forth. Yeah, thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. And thanks again for acknowledging that, you know, there uh, we're, we're kind of working on two planes here, right? I mean, there is the, the practical reality of navigating the system. And then there's the emotional reality that a lot of people, um, as you know, and, and you had this experience yourself, um, there's a lot of feelings that attend to um, even feeling as if you have to do this, right? There's a sense of, why do I have to do this? When I talk to my mom every year, when it, uh, she lives in South Carolina, and when it's time for her, um, you know, to consider her options, her, her first reaction is always like, why do I have to do this? It, it doesn't feel fair. I shouldn't have to work this hard. You know, I worked hard my whole life. This shouldn't be so hard. Um, and, and there's some anger and some resentment and, and some disappointment and, and bitterness. It feels discouraging and dispiriting. Um, you know, she, she feels like it, it doesn't need to be this difficult. Um, and I absolutely understand that many of you are having those same kinds of feelings. Um, and obviously related to this benefit in particular, right? It sort of goes under the umbrella of post-employment uh, benefits. And there's a, there's a strong sense of entitlement as if, you know, uniform medical plan and, you know, reasonably priced health insurance with good coverage was, was part of what we bargained. You know, when I was working, it, I had the expectation uh, that it would be here and that it wouldn't be complex to navigate if I was interested in making a change, or that it wouldn't be so difficult to navigate uh, finding some support or getting some customer service. And so, I, you know, again, all, all respect to my colleagues at the HCA and other agencies, um, I appreciate that it's been frustrating uh, for you. And um, I can't promise what the um, customer service experience is going to be like uh, this year. And, you know, I, I make no promises about how accessible or how useful uh, the websites or the printed materials. Um, but as, as Matt said, I've, I've worked at the HC, I've worked directly with these people and colleagues. They're all decent, hardworking people, and, and they're really extending themselves to do their very best to take care of you. Um, and in spite of that, it still is uh, overwhelming for you and overwhelming for them. So as Matt said, we're just um, kind of adding our voice uh, to the chorus or adding our back to the lift. Um, this program is just meant to supplement the work of those agencies. We're not trying to um, take anybody's uh, role here or, or take the space away uh, from them for sure. And with that, let me move ahead um, to the next slide. So first, um, I, this is a no judgment kind of conversation, right? Um, I, if, if, if you have the Uniform Medical Plan and, and you stay there, at the end of this program, you've done your research and you've decided that that's the best option for you, you have all my support. If at the end of the program, you decide to make a change, you have all my support. So I'm you know, i agnostic about uh, the choices that you make 
um, including staying right where you're at. Um, I also want to reinforce because last year there was a fair amount of um, publicity about this. Um, the UMP plan is not being discontinued or closed. So you're not required to change plans. Having said that, if you do change plans this year, you can absolutely change plans again next year. We're going to talk over and over again in this program about the fact that the insurance that you have through the Uniform Medical Plan or another plan inside the PEP portfolio is a group plan. And that's different than an individual market plan. So as a member of the group, one of the special rights that you have is that you can switch plans from one year to the next year. And you do that without any kind of waiting period for a pre-existing condition. There's no medical underwriting. So if you elect to switch from UMP this year to another plan, suppose you go to Primera or suppose you go to Kaiser or you go to United Healthcare, you can absolutely go back again next year or change to another plan next year. So I, I don't mean to discount that this is a high stakes decision for you, but there is a bit of a safety net in the way that you can change again next year. And then, as I said a moment ago, there's lots of expert professional help available from various sources in various ways. I'm going to talk at a high level about those because uh, when Matt and I are recording the program today, I don't have all of the details about things like when benefits fairs will be available, but we will, um, as we move into the second program, have more details and I would encourage you to reach out to the RPEC or to reach out to the HCA and um, get very familiar with um, the options that you have to engage one-on-one uh, -on -one or in small groups uh, with other experts from the HCA or from the health plans. Matt, are, are you ready for me to go ahead and talk specifically about plan changes? Uh, yes, I would just say that this ability to switch every year with no health screening required from plan to plan to plan within PEB is a huge benefit. And it is uh, in the commercial market, that is not necessarily true. There are lots of exceptions. So array for, for HCA for this. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so at, at the very highest level then, and again, this may seem a bit uh, rudimentary, how I would describe your options as you face into the next open enrollment period or annual election period, if you have the uniform medical plan, which is administered through regents, you could absolutely um, stay there. That's a perfectly legitimate option. And um, lots of people are going to make exactly that choice. Another option at a high level would be to switch to another plan inside the HCA PEB portfolio of plans. And there are several and they are all excellent plans. The third option at a high level would be to exit the PEB portfolio. And as Matt said, pick a plan that's available in the commercial market or the individual market. So many beneficiaries don't have access to group insurance from the place they used to work. And so you could be one of those people who um, rejects the group uh, at this point in time and leaves. All of these choices um, are valid and legitimate. All of them have consequences. What we'd like to do in this program is just highlight some of the consequences or some of the pros and cons, if you will, about each of these kinds of choices. In the second program, we'll talk more directly about how to do that, including the forms and the timing uh, and tools for researching those choices. But in this first program, again, we're just looking at a high level about what are your options? Because for many people, especially in the UMP, you've been a bit on cruise control. You've never really taken a moment to think about um, really exercising your option to switch to another plan. Um, and again, I'm not meaning to imply that you should or that it's better, but I just want to make sure you're aware that it's a possibility. Um, okay. so. Probably if there was a, a handful of two or three uh, important lessons out of this program, uh, one would be what I just said a moment ago and Matt reinforced, which is um, as a person who's getting your insurance through the HCA PEB, and I'm talking specifically here to uh, retirees with Medicare because there obviously are retirees who are not Medicare eligible people. But 
one of the most significant things that distinguishes you is that you are enrolled in a group plan compared to an individual group plan. Um, the second thing, and I realize this is a little bit of a revelation, um, but you have Medicare insurance as your primary insurance. Um, so the group really makes the rules about the group. So it really is true that HCA um, is kind of the keeper of the rules that attach to the group. But as a person who's enrolled in Medicare, there are lots of rules about Medicare that HCA has to abide in. And so when you think about your insurance, what I'm going to urge you to do is think about it in this way. I have Medicare insurance. Besides Medicare, what other insurance suits me best? And so what I'm going to do in this program is kind of align the PEB portfolio to, in general, how Medicare insurance works for you as a member of the group and for people who are not enrolled uh, or don't have the option to enroll in a group medical plan. So uh, on the left-hand side of the page then, um, in this sort of pale orange color, I'm referring to this as original Medicare. You'll also hear this referred to as fee-for-service Medicare or traditional Medicare. On the right-hand side of the page then, I'm referring to this as Medicare Advantage. You'll also hear this referred to as Medicare Part C or Medicare Plus Choice plans. But these are, for everyone in Medicare, including people in the PEB portfolio, your options about how you elect to get the benefits that you have through the Medicare program. Can I so, make a quick comment? Please, Matt, help me out. Yeah. Um, I think it's important uh, to acknowledge that there is a lot of press on Medicare Advantage plans in the commercial market. And uh, there is a lot of advertising there. You'll see Joe Namath saying it's <laughs> $0 premium and you get a gym membership and so on and so forth. Uh, the, they, the catch is, and that we are not in a position here to be talking about Medicare Advantage in, in uh, detail, but they often have, have uh, you have, often have to pay six and a half thousand dollars out of pocket before your benefits uh, kick in. And the Medicare Advantage plan through HCA, the Medicare Advantage plans are completely different. They, um, they were they have a contract HCA does with uh, H, with uh, unif with um, United Healthcare and Kaiser that have vastly different benefits uh, than the um, than the commercial plan. So I I urge everyone to the only thing I'm trying to say is do not just immediately say oh United Healthcare and Kaiser Permanente PEB plans or Me Medicare Advantage plans, so they're awful and bad like the ones that I read about in the newspaper. That's that's all I'm saying. Thank you. That's such an important distinction, Matt. I, I think we just, between you and me, we just can't say enough that the, the kinds of plans that are available to you in PEB, even if they have the same name, right? You, you might hear United Healthcare in the context of commercial or individual plans. You might hear Kaiser Permanente in the context of individual commercial plans. Th those are not the same plans that operate under a very different set of rules than the plans that you have as part of the PEB portfolio. Um, and as you said, uh, they're, they're simply, they're better plans. They provide better coverage. They have lower out-of-pocket costs. And there's more protections for you as a member of the group than there is in those commercial plans. So that's absolutely, uh, you know, a pretty constant a uh, source of confusion, a thing that we do lots of counseling about. Honestly, every year I had this conversation with my mother. She's part of an employer group, group plan as a survivor uh, of, of my father. And every year, Matt, the conversation goes like this. She calls me up and she says, I know we talked about this last year. And I know you told me, stay with your group. But my friend that I go to water aerobics with, she has this plan that has zero premium and it pays for her gym membership. And shouldn't I switch? And I say, look, I want you to know you can switch. Let's just get a pencil and paper and draw it out 
and talk about how it pencils out. And then you decide because both are absolutely good options for you, just so your eyes wide open, right, about what the trade off is. And then the next year we do the same conversation over again, which is great, right? And yeah. important and good for her for having the presence of mind to consider her options and to reach out and get some help. And every year I say, you know, there's a program like ours in South Carolina. And she says every year, I know, but I love talking to you. You never call me. <laughs> and I say, okay, <laughs> point taken. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> um, so let me just acknowledge that this is one of those places where a little bit I'm taking liberty uh, or a little bit of a shortcut. So I'm using this box here to say United Healthcare, when in fact there are two plans in the PEB portfolio offered by United Healthcare, and I'm uh, putting Kaiser Permanente here on the Medicare Advantage side of, of the screen, when in fact there is a Kaiser Permanente plan uh, that coordinates benefits with original Medicare. But again, just um, to help provide a little bit of focus um, and, and to move into, you know, through this first program into the second one. Um, and there is, of course, uh, many of you know, there is a Medicare Supplement Plan F, like Frank, that is also offered by Primera, and many folks are enrolled in that plan. I will talk about that in the third program. So let me just acknowledge at this point, I'm taking a little bit, some shortcuts here, but the main point is just to reinforce that um, we are operating in two different kinds of systems. Um, between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage. And uh, as we move through the second and third programs, that distinction uh, will become more clear and more important. So then generally, how does the um, PEB portfolio align? Uh, we have the uniform medical plan uh, administered by Regents, the Medicare supplement plan G administered by Primera. We have the plans that are offered through United Healthcare and the plans that are offered through Kaiser Permanente. So what are your options then? At a high level, you could re-enroll with the Uniform Medical Plan. You could switch to the Medicare Supplement Plan G offered by Primera. You could switch to one of the plans offered by United Healthcare. You could switch to one of the plans offered by Kaiser Permanente. You could exit the PEB portfolio altogether and choose a plan that's available in the commercial market for people who have Medicare insurance. So here is a summary then of those options. And again, let me acknowledge that there are plural United Healthcare plans and plural Kaiser Permanente plans. Um, and I think I maybe apologies to our friends at United Healthcare. It may have um, mangled the spelling there uh, in terms of how their branding is. So apologies. Um, so how about um, option number one then to re-enroll uh, with the United Med Uniform Medical Plan? Um, what I would suggest, and I think Matt, you went through this exercise last year, is yeah. just have a conversation with yourself and, and ask, um, what do I really like about the Uniform Medical Plan? Um, or what is it about the Uniform Medical Plan that might rankle me a little? Or what is the thing about the Uniform Medical Plan that I care about the most, that I just absolutely want to hold on to uh, those features or those aspects of that plan, and I'm really not willing to change unless I can um, have those same things uh, someplace else? Uh, or what are the things about it that... Um, maybe you would like to steer clear of? What are the things about it that uh, you would like to have be different um, in your next plan? Um, so I'd say sit down, have a conversation with yourself, draw up a list, uh, maybe talk to some other friends uh, about their experience of the plan, uh, check it out with somebody. Um, and uh, ju you know, just have this exercise, reacquaint yourself uh, with uh, your own kind of personal values and preferences um, as a starting place if you're thinking about staying here. And what do you want to offer, Matt? Right. Um, I, I will say that as since I went through this last year, that the premium increase of 20% last year is what motivated me to start the process. And then as I started learning more, it became, um, I'm glad I, yeah, I, I'm glad I went through it. Um, uh, uh, I had to 
go, okay, I like UMP. There are very few negatives with, with um, a uniform medical. Uh, the cost was, was a challenge. And the two more expensive drugs I take, I wanted to compare costs with other plans. And from that, I, I began my journey and um, it was, I, I learned a lot and I feel a lot more confident about insurance, uh, my healthcare and that of my wife. Uh, it's really important to have the best possible and there are always give and takes with insurance, nothing's perfect. And I made a choice, I, and um, I, I, I'm satisfied so far. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I guess I'll just, um, uh, you know, it, it honestly has been such a pleasure working with you and Lori um, in Leanne and putting together these programs. So I just want to say again that I think uh, you, you really are highlighting all, all of the most important things uh, that I'm, I'm simply going to repeat behind you, uh, and, and starting with there is no perfect insurance, right? There's no perfect fit. Um, and that includes the fact that none of the plans, you know, pay for everything. None of the plans have universal access. Uh, and and it, as much as you uh, work diligently to choose the right plan for you, lo and behold, in the year ahead, uh, the plans change and your needs change. And so, uh, you know, there is a fair amount of uncertainty that attaches to this. Um, and so at some point you do your best research and you consult broadly with people um, and then you make peace with your choice and then you, you know, um, you, you do the best you can inside the system, right? You sort of play the, play the hand you're dealt and, and continue to be a strong advocate for yourself and seek out other people to support you. And I want to say quickly that one thing that happened through this process is that I found a second choice. You know, there, there, there's another plan I can go to if the plan I'm on doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. And that gives me so much um, peace of mind. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that can happen. Well, what if this doesn't work out? This mm -hmm. plan doesn't work out. Well, I can say, well, I have another one that's rock solid right down the line that I can go right into. And so I, I feel so much more secure. That's excellent. That's excellent. <laughs> Let me um, talk at a high level then about uh, for folks who are not um, going to stay with Uniform Medical Plan, if you're um, considering making a switch to another different plan in the HCA PEP portfolio of plans, um, and I'm going to stress this in each of the programs, um, there is some complexity that attaches to making a change. Um, HCA has their own set of forms. Um, the health plans have their own forms. Um, the rules about dependent coverage are complicated, including whether you have dependents who are in Medicare or not. You might have uh, younger um, dependents, including up to age 26. You may have dependents who are disabled. Um, and so as you're considering making a change, um, considering the needs of uh, other people who are on your coverage as dependents um, should be a top of mind concern for you. And one of those things that you uh, investigate with the HCA. Tim? Yes, sir. I, I want to clarify that a dependent is also your um, eligible partner spouse, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, and it may be that you're a dependent uh, who, who on, on the coverage, right, with your subscriber, and you may be the person doing this research. So yes, thank you. Dependent doesn't necessarily just mean uh, a child. It can mean your spouse or domestic partner as well. Yep. Thank you for that. Sure. Um, and then the third, uh, at a high level, right, so the first thing is uh, forms and paperwork. Uh, the second thing is dependent coverage. The third thing is that other benefits that you have, and, and Matt wants to talk about dental insurance coverage, um, you can only retain your dental insurance coverage as a retiree if you maintain your health insurance coverage. So if you decide that you're going to leave the PEB portfolio and, and get your Medicare um, insurance through, uh, as Matt says, the commercial market, I would say the individual market, 
um, you're likely going to be giving up your HEB dental coverage. Um, and um, again, that doesn't um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It just means you should have a plan for what are you going to do about your oral health care and dental health care uh, as as you consider making that change, right? Because it goes on that list of uh, trade offs, right? Um, and I'm going to just uh, reinforce again that lots of different ways to get help with all of those questions about forms, about dependents, about the rules, about how your health insurance choices affect other choices. Um, the HCA is your source uh, as the group administrator. They are your source for all of that information. They have an excellent uh, website. You can obviously call them. If you live locally, you can go down to their offices um, on Cherry Street in downtown Olympia. Uh, they will be sponsoring um, virtual and in-person benefits fairs. Um, so absolutely, please make sure to avail yourself of the option of uh, having that conversation with the HCA or doing some research, um, there is some complexity. It does hang people up a little bit. Um, and so please, um, you know, pay attention to those details if you're considering switching. So uh, to add to that, um, I'll be I'll be frank with you. The 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 HCA form to change plans is the most difficult form. I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you here. Uh, but here's the key, and, and I'm just going to be pounding on this with Tim, is don't wait until the last two weeks of November to get on the phone to call anybody, including HCA, on how to fill out the form. Uh, I procrastinate, lots of people procrastinate, but in this instance, Try to get going on this as soon as you can after you get that open enrollment handbook. Call the plans, call your providers, call HCA. And also HCA said, I called them a couple of days ago, they're gonna have videos on how to fill out the form, which I was not aware of. And um, so I, I probably could have saved myself some time and headache if I had known those materials existed. And that's why these videos are here for you. Uh, thanks. I think I did look at that. Uh, at least I did a preview of that video the other day. And, and and kudos to the HCA. I mean, they they're definitely you know hearing that feedback and 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 trying to get better. So um, you know it's it's not easy. And a lot of things. Um, well, I mean, it, you again. You and I talked about this, Matt, with Lori and Leanne. Um, you know, sometimes just this sort of conversation or uh, you know video with a with oral. Um, and and as I said, we'll make the slide deck available. Sometimes you, 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 multimedia, right? You have to hear it uh, more than once, different ways. Um, and yeah, the form the forms can be a little bit formidable, but they are important. Uh, in fact, you know they're they're required, right? It's a legal document. As I said, you're working both with HCA and with Medicare and with the plans, and uh, you know the the consequences are are real. And so the forms are important and it is unfortunate that they're uh, challenging, but honestly, they are challenging and everybody knows that. So if you call Primera and say, gosh, that's a challenging form, that's not the first time they ever heard that. <laughs> if you call United Healthcare and say, gosh, it's hard to reach you guys, not the first time they ever heard that. So you're not going to hurt their feelings um, and they really are striving uh, to get better. And obviously, same thing applies for me and our agency. So let me just uh, have a little bit of humility here, right? Absolutely. Um, Matt, let me just uh, catch up my notes here a moment. Uh, and I'm minding our time a little bit because you and I and Lori agreed that we try to finish this program in an hour. So I right. feel like we're pretty well on track. Um, I want to come back to uh, the reality uh, for people that, Again, this audience really is focused on retirees with Medicare, what HCA PEB would call Medicare retirees. So important for you to understand that Medicare is your primary insurance. So you have your uh, red, white, and blue Medicare card, and that is your primary insurance. Any of the plans that you choose in the PEB portfolio or any plan you choose outside the PEB portfolio is your secondary insurance. We talked about that the um, Kaiser Permanente plan in some counties in Washington is explicitly branded as coordination of benefits or COB. In other words, it pays 
after Medicare pays. But that's the reality for all of the plans in the PEB portfolio. So if you currently have Uniform Medical Plan, Medicare pays first, and then Uniform Medical Plan pays. You probably are aware that as an HCA Medicare retiree, you must enroll in Medicare Part A and Medicare Part B. It's a condition of participation that you have and maintain coverage in Medicare and Part A and Medicare Part B to have your PEP Medicare retiree coverage. And Medicare coverage, although it is not comprehensive coverage, it's essential to your healthcare. And the Medicare program is evolving every year to get better at taking care of you and to take care of your health care. Obviously, Medicare has been in the news quite a lot recently, uh, including with the advent of the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, $35 a month for insulin. As you know, the government is going to um, potentially bargain uh, for the prices of some drugs. Obviously, this is being litigated. Uh, but Medicare coverage really is uh, your first coverage, and it's important to uh, you in the sense that you have to maintain it to maintain your PEB retiree coverage, and it actually provides quite a lot of coverage that's important to your health and well-being. Um, so this is my uh, somewhat hand-drawn um, illustration, um, and so let me just acknowledge this is not drawn to scale. It's uh, only meant to be an illustration, and what I'm trying to represent here is that Medicare insurance uh, I think we're best served by describing it as major medical insurance. And what that means is, number one, it doesn't cover all of the services that are medically needed by you. And number two, for the services that it does cover, <clears throat> it often does not pay 100% of the cost. So for most people who know something about Medicare insurance, they know that, for instance, most services provided by doctors are covered 80% by Medicare, 20% by you. And so in all aspects of the Medicare program, there are these cost sharing provisions. So things like deductibles, co-insurance, co-pays. So Medicare rarely pays for everything you need and often does not pay 100% of the cost. So if the large size box is meant to represent what a full insurance package might look like to you. It's acknowledging that Medicare Part A and B does not include prescription drug coverage with the exception of drugs that are provided uh, in the hospital or through your doctor's office. And it doesn't cover a lot of the services that you might need are not covered by Medicare Part A and B. And so that's why almost everyone has some coverage besides Medicare insurance. Here's the same graphic um, in a slightly different form. So what I'm representing is that your Medicare Part A and Part B coverage sort of is the bottom of the pyramid. And what you want to think about doing is supplementing your coverage or adding to your coverage, starting with how about paying for the things uh, that Medicare doesn't cover in full? How about adding prescription drug coverage? And then how about getting some insurance for medically needed care that's not part of the original Medicare or Medicare Part A and B and uh, Tim, you, covered services. You met, Tim, you mentioned that before that you use the term otherly medi medically needed care, but as as you say that, it's helpful for folks to remember the the old adage that that other medically needed care are things like glasses and hearing aids and naturopath and Medicare doesn't cover them, but some plans do. And yes, another sir. thing that's important to remember is um, the the plans that cover that other medically needed care, they often charge more per month so that they can pay for those things. Primera Plan G doesn't pay for those things, and it costs about 100 a month, plus you might pay $25, $50 a month for your supplemental drug plan for a total of very roughly 150. Well, for your um, um, uh, uh, uniform medical plan, you're paying $538 a month. And there's a big difference between 150 and 538. So that's what we're talking about is one is not necessarily different than the other, 
but it's important to not discount any plan out of hand until you really do the research on it. Th thank you, Matt. Yeah, as as usual, that's so helpful. And I'm I'm just going to be in the business of coming behind you and repeating what you said. I mean, one of the nice things about the PEB portfolio of plans is that you really have a big range uh, of, of plans in terms of how much insurance do you really want, right? So as, as you said, the uh, the Primera Plan G, that, that insurance goes only as far as paying for the part of the bill that Medicare covers but doesn't pay for. And, and for some people, that's the perfect solution, right? That's as much insurance as they want or as much insurance as they can afford, or it's as much as they want to invest in their health insurance, either because it's what they can afford or because they have other uses for, the, uh, you know, as you said, the other couple of hundred dollars a month rather than um, buying more insurance. Um, and if, you know, if you make, if you make that choice, if you do engage with the Primera uh, Medigap Plan G, um, then how will you pay for your prescription drugs and how will you pay for those other medically needed um, services that aren't part of uh, your plan? And, and honestly, there's lots of different approaches for that. It, it, as we all know, lots of people who are enrolled in the HCA PEB plan have other coverage, um, for instance, through a husband or wife or through the Veterans Administration or through TRICARE for Life or through Indian Health Services, right? And so okay. it's not as if um, people are relying solely on their HCA uh, PEB plan. And so this, again, it's just a good opportunity to kind of uh, lay out all your options and, and consider, um, is that a thing that I'm willing to or able to pay out of my own pocket if it was to come up? Or do I feel like I need the security of knowing that my insurance is going to pay for it? Because as you said, it's pretty well like a teeter-totter, right? It's a, it's like the, the more insurance you buy, the higher the premium you're going to have. So if you want um, to have more coverage, if you want to have the insurance pay more compared to you, you know, that's very straightforward. Your premium will be slightly higher, um, right? Uh, and, and then my last observation here is just how much um, change can you bear and how much risk can you bear? You know, if you're currently enrolled in a uniform medical plan, you're going to switch to Primera or one of the United Healthcare plans or one of the Kaiser plans. You know, that's a challenge. There's a period of adjustment. Um, and if you're going to switch to a plan where you bear more of the risk, um, you know, that's a challenge. That's an adjustment. You know, so, you know, there, there, there's a bit of a psychology here, right? There's a bit of like, how, how, how do you take care of your own mental health uh, besides taking care of your finances uh, and, and access? Um, you know, it's a, it's, a lot to, uh, it's a lot to think about. It's a lot to work through. So, it is, indeed. <laughs> you know, take care of yourself. It's a um, lot to consider, but it's important work and you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. We, Matt and I have confidence in you. We do. You know, I often, uh, when Matt and I were first meeting and, you know, we talked about this, I said, you know, Matt, it's, it's kind of sad in a way that you, ha you have these people who, uh, they had a career, they raised kids, you know, they had pets, they bought a house, they traveled outside the country. They did all kinds of challenging, adventurous things. And then it comes time to open enrollment and and they're terrified. Like, yeah. well, you know, that's not okay. People have plenty of, you know, skills and abilities and intelligence to apply to this problem. But it's just a little bit too much of a riddle, a, a, a little bit too much like cracking the code, right? A little, a little bit too much um, confusion and anxiety. So, but I think between you and me, and our friends at RPEC and uh, WEA, and then obviously Social Security, Medicare, HCA, the health plans. I, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna be okay. I I, I have confidence in us, like you and do. Do do not wait until late November to do this. You're just gonna hear me <laughs> yes. repeating it. It will right. not be pleasant. It will be unpleasant, or they might not pick up the phone at all. Yes. So, yeah. Start start early, right? Start early. Start, start early. Um, this is just a graphic that I, I included just because, um, you know, a little bit of a preview of the program that we're going to do um, in program three. Uh, most people in Medicare do have some other insurance besides Medicare, right? We're on, we're on the high side of 90%. 
Um, you can see that folks who have uh, other coverage besides Medicare that comes from the place they used to work is about 27%. We're calling that employment-related insurance. Folks who have Medicare and Medicaid um, are about 18%, about one in five. Um, and that's also a program we're going to talk about quite a bit more when we get to the third program. Um, people obviously get confused. They say Medicare when they mean Medicaid. They say Medicaid when they mean Medicare. Um, but there are um, two different programs, and there are people who are enrolled in both programs. And again, in the third program, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the diversity of Medicaid programs, because there is uh, more than enough confusion uh, uh, about that and, and misinformation uh, that we need to do a little bit of myth, bust, myth busting there. And then Medigap plans, uh, that's our shorthand for Medicare supplement plans. The uh, example here would be the Primera uh, Plan G, which is one of the standard uh, Medicare supplement plans. We're going to talk quite a bit about that also in the third program. And then uh, the shorthand here, MA, means Medicare Advantage plans, about 27%. And Matt, I know that we have some uh, very sharp people uh, listening to the program today that are saying, wait, 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 Tim, Matt, hold on, because I heard, I read in the paper that Medicare Advantage plans have almost half of all Medicare uh, beneficiaries now. And Tim is saying 27%. How do we square the circle? Well, so that's a great question. And let me tell you how we square the circle. About half of the people who are in what we're calling employment-related plans are enrolled in MA plans. So the obvious example inside the PEB portfolio would be the United Healthcare or Kaiser plans. They are employment-related plans and they are MA plans. And about half of the people enrolled in Medicaid plans are also enrolled in Medicare Advantage plans. So in Washington state, we refer to our Medicaid program as Apple Health. And so you can be an Apple Health member and be enrolled in a managed care plan. Um, and so when we take half of the employment related folks and half of the Medicaid folks and add them into the 27% for MA plans, that's how we get to 50% of all Medicare beneficiaries uh, enrolled in MA plans. And the reason I'm making the distinction here again, um, to come back to the point, Matt, that you and I talked about at the outset is group insurance is different. The folks in the orange colored segment who have employment related insurance, that's substantially different than the folks in the turquoise colored circle or blue colored circle that sends MA plans. Those are group plans that operate under a different set of rules, have more comprehensive benefits than MA plans in general. And I, I'd like to um, use this time to this point to talk about the, the Medicare subsidy for the, for the PEB program folks. Uh, the state, actually, you, you might not know this, but for the PEB plans, the state subsidizes that. And the subsidy runs from about and, and this is not exact, but the subsidy runs from about $100 a month to $183 a month, depending on the cost of the plan, the premium. And you do not get that if you leave PEM. So uh, it's another advantage of, of staying in the PEM portfolio, if that's something that uh, you're willing to do. It's a, it's a big benefit. Uh, um, United, uh, excuse me, uh, Uniform Medical would cost uh, $2,200, $2,300 a year more to us if there weren't that state Medicare subsidy that was given to us. So thank you, State of Washington. <laughs> Matt, it's federal uh, money that's passed on to us. As as a um, as a as a as a working person, I'm saying you're welcome. <laughs> as, as as a person who's contributing, uh, you're you're welcome for that. <laughs> uh, I lost my uh, I lost my presentation there for a moment. Just bear with me here. Oh goodness. Okay. Whoops. I'm, Matt, I, am I back on screen for you? No, the the um, 
presentation is not up. Okay, let me try again. Apologies. This is not my uh, not my best thing. This is live performance. There we this go. Is, this is right, live live performance. Thanks, Matt. This, this is, is live like, TV. You you and I were talking about like this harkens back to uh, kind of the old timey uh, radio programs, right? That's right. Uh, we'd we'd be like uh, clicking clack the tap and yeah. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so let me uh, again come back to. Uh, Again, this is this is the reality for all people in Medicare, not just people in the PEP portfolio, but it applies to folks who are in the PEP portfolio, including Uniform Medical Plan. So you have a choice about how you're going to receive uh, your Medicare uh, benefits, uh, which is between Original Medicare and Medicare Advantage. Um, and for all the plans in the PEP portfolio, the differences are significant, but as Matt said, they're not as significant um, because number one, this is a group plan or employer group plan. Um, and number two, there is this, uh, what HCA would refer to as the Medicare explicit subsidy. So the premiums uh, that retirees pay are subsidized by the state. It's literally a line item in the budget. Uh, how much money is the state going to spend to make uh, retiree coverage for people with Medicare more affordable? And the distinction that I'm making here is that for Medicare retirees, we refer to this as the explicit subsidy. And for retirees who are not yet in Medicare, we refer to this as the implicit subsidy. And we'll talk about that again in the third program. Um, but for today, uh, two significant differences, and I hope this is a bit of review based on my uh, pyramid looking chart, is that um, how you arrange for prescription drugs and uh, medically needed care matters, right? It's different in plans that look like original Medicare compared to plans that look like Medicare Advantage. And then access. I mean, literally beyond coverage and cost, there's access. And I'm gonna talk about access to providers by which I mean uh, principally doctors and hospitals, and then the formulary uh, for uh, outpatient prescription drugs. So here's a quick refresher again, where I'm uh, sort of trying to illustrate the point that there are two different approaches. Um, and the uniform medical plan approach aligns to original Medicare. So you obviously are enrolled in Medicare Part A, which is hospital insurance, Medicare Part B, which is medical insurance, and then um, coverage for the part of the bill Medicare doesn't pay, Medicare cost sharing prescription drug coverage and other medically needed care is then packaged as a bundle into the uniform medical plan and offered through that plan. Again, second to your Medicare insurance. Um, if we take a look at how Primera Plan G works to solve this problem, it is again, an original Medicare approach solution beyond Medicare Part A and B. It covers only the cost sharing associated with covered services. So how that works is Medicare pays first and then Primera pays second, and it only pays for the services that Medicare has already approved. So it's coming behind you to pay those deductibles, co-insurance, co-pays. So in effect, you have no out-of-pocket costs for services that are covered by Medicare, nor, however, do you have any coverage for prescription drugs or other medically needed care. So you need to find a different solution for that. So here's uh, then a side-by-side -side comparison of the two approaches with the uniform medical plan, cost sharing, the prescription drug coverage, and other med medically needed care is bundled together. With Primera, you get only the Medicare cost sharing and you need to make other arrangement for prescription drug coverage and other medically needed care. And as Matt said, we're talking about things like eyeglasses, hearing aids, uh, and other kinds of therapies like chiropractic, acupuncture, um, massage, naturopathy. I'm going to go out on somewhat of a limb here um, and say since I was a, a uniform medical subscriber since the early 90s and carried on into retirement, um, I was so pleased that 
um, when I went to my doctor and I, uh, I, I, I didn't have to play games in my experience with prior authorization where they go, well, no, we have to get approval before we give you care and, and all that kind of thing. And people love that about uniform medical. I, I, I want to say, and again, this is my personal opinion, I am not a professional, but it seems pretty obvious to me that for the part that original Medicare, Primera Plan G covers, which is going to the doctor, going to the labs, going to the hospital, it is also rock solid like UMP um, Uniform Medical. So uh, that is a generalization. I am not a professional, but I think it's important for you to hear fairly safe generalizations to make like that um, uh, be, because this is complex stuff. Is that fair to say, Tim? 100%, Matt. I, okay. I think you're, you're a semi-professional. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, and we'll talk about this more in the second and third programs, but for, for most of the history of the Medicare program, uh, most people uh, got their other insurance besides Medicare through plans like uh, the Plan G, these Medicare supplement plans. And uh, th there is... It, it's a bit, again, unfamiliar for folks who kind of came up in the uniform medical plan system because that, as you know, is what we would call a PPO or preferred provider um, organization. Uh, the, the provider network for Medicare uh, supplement plans, including the Premier Plan G, is essentially any doctor that contracts with Medicare. That's and as huge. you said, there, there's huge. no uh, prior authorizations or referrals to see a specialist, you know, so... I mean, obviously, this is not real life, but if you decided that you wanted to have, uh, you know, a knee replacement surgery and you wanted to have it done in Tucson because you wanted to recover in the sun, you could simply get yourself down there and have the surgery and it would be all the same to Medicare and Premier. As long as uh, the provider bills Medicare and the plan, right? Yes. So very straightforward um, in that sense. Right. Um, and thank you for that. And we, and we will talk about that uh, some more because those trade-offs about access are just critically important, right? And as you said, one of the things people really prize about the Uniform Medical Plan is uh, the freedom of choosing providers that they have. And so we do need to talk about how uh, that shows up as a trade-off if you consider another plan in the PEB portfolio. But I think while we're here specifically talking about the Primera Plan G, um, you're not trading off anything in terms of access um, compared to uniform medical plan. And again, we'll we'll come back to that and we'll do a review of all the plans. So um, I, I'm I'm really trying hard not to have because I don't I don't have any bias about one plan compared to another, but trying to be careful in the presentation not to create that appearance. Yeah. Um, and so. and I I as somebody who is sort of like the guinea pig who has been through the process. I'm a bit more free to talk about my personal experience mm -hmm. as long as it's taken with a grain of salt that um, I'm I'm not a professional in the business. So, so yeah, we're in two different places in terms of how we react to things, and and that's good. So, that's good. Yeah. I think that's for the good for this presentation for that's sure. Right. That's right. And again, I'm uh, kind of coming behind you and repeating things you said. Uh, the, so the, the fundamental concern that people are going to have uh, who elect uh, Primera Plan G uh, or for folks that already have it is to take care of prescription drug coverage. And the solution for that is to enroll in a Medicare Part D prescription drug insurance program. And I want to um, just, uh, and again, we'll cover this some more in the other programs, but I want to make the distinction here that what we're talking about is what Medicare would call a standalone prescription uh, drug plan. In other words, it doesn't attach to a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and again, uh, and and I think Ellen and the folks at the HCA, and this is Ellen Wolfhagen, excuse me, and the folks at the HCA do a nice job in the materials of saying, as well as, so so does the plan materials, um, the, the only compatibility is 
the Primera Plan G and a standalone Medicare Part D plan. In other words, you can't elect a standalone Medicare Part D plan if you have UMP. You can't elect a standalone Medicare Part D plan if you have Kaiser or United Healthcare uh, Medicare Advantage plan. They're exclusive, right? That's what the gray line on the slide is meant to represent that the original Medicare approach and the Medicare Advantage approach are exclusive. Um, and we will talk some more in the second program about, well, if I was interested in this path, how would I go about choosing a Medicare Part D plan? Uh, what are the tools? What are the resources? What kind of help can I get? Um, so please just bear with us. We will come back to this um, and talk in quite a lot more detail about um, how to explore those choices or how to actually affect those choices, including things like the forms and paperwork. Um, but for today, uh, let's just acknowledge that uh, the, the option to switch to Primera Plan G for most people, it's going to also attach to a related decision to buy in the private insurance market or the commercial insurance market, uh, what I call the individual insurance market, uh, a Medicare Part D plan. Um, and let me just say before we move on that it's not required that you do that. Um, again, there are people who have other prescription drug insurance through other options, for instance, a spouse. Um, but there are, you will no doubt be aware that there are rules about enrolling in Medicare Part D, penalties for late enrollment, delays. We will talk about that in the third program. Um, so when I say it's not a requirement that you get a Medicare Part D plan, be aware of that. Uh, there's consequences of not having what Medicare would refer to as creditable coverage. Um, so the most likely path is Primera Plan G and a private uh, Medicare Part D plan. Jim, how are we doing on time? Um, Matt, I think we're just need to wrap up here. I think we're getting close and and um, maybe the 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 um, and sorry, folks, we, we have to talk here. The two frick and frack need to talk um, um, th that we can go to the how do you get help or we could uh, section or we could start program two with how to get help. OK, let me um, let me just do this, Matt, just so that we um, just so that we have sort of equal airtime for the Medicare Advantage plans. Let me just- Absolutely. Um, let me do that. And then why don't we do what you suggested and talk about um, how and where uh, to get help and do a quick preview of um, the next program. And again, apologies for my uh, colleagues here um, in the SHIBA program that do this all the time better than me as I manage the slide deck. So um, thanks, thanks for the time check, Matt. Um, so, right, so let's take a look at um, plans on the other side of the line, so to speak, the other approach um, to plans um, inside the PEP portfolio um, that don't look like original Medicare, we're referring to as Medicare Advantage plans. Um, this would apply to both of the United Healthcare plans. This would also apply to the Kaiser Medicare Advantage plans, not the Kaiser Coordination of Benefit plans. So it's like UMP in the way that it bundles um, the other services beyond Medicare Part A and Medicare Part B. So it covers the part of the bill that Medicare doesn't pay for. It includes prescription drug coverage and it includes coverage for other medically needed care. So um, I'm using uh, this slide says explicitly United Healthcare. Again, apologies for the branding, but it would work equally well with Kaiser to say that it lines up um, as uniform medical plan in the way that it's comprehensive. It includes a package of services beyond Medicare Part A and Part B that includes the cost sharing, the prescription drugs, and the other, other medically needed care. And the concern that people are going to have, obviously, is what are the details behind uh, that package, including things like the provider network and the prescription drug formulary? And we'll talk about that extensively um, in the second program. I, I will say that the, the roughest measure within, I think it's seven different PEB plans, that the um, most similar plan to uniform medical in the PEB portfolio 
is United Healthcare, their HEP complete plan. They are different, don't get me wrong, but if you if you were just generalizing what are what are the most two most similar plans, it would be that. Matt, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Okay, so then let me just um, let me just, as you suggested, let's skip ahead a bit here and um, talk about people getting help, and then do a quick preview of what we're going to do in the next program, and then we'll uh, release people to whatever it is they're doing <laughs> instead of listening to you and me. So, um, where where we sort of left off then is we talked at a high level about options for folks who are in UMP that are considering making a change. So obviously staying in UMP is staying in UMP is a perfectly valid option. You could switch to another plan inside the PEB portfolio. So we talked about those um, and we tried to arrange them as they align to original Medicare or Medicare Advantage plan options. Uh, or you could exit the PEB portfolio and we're going to talk about how to do that. Uh, any of those in the second program in more details. Um, and we also um, talked a little bit about how uh, the plans relate one to another in terms of taking care of the part of the bill that Medicare doesn't pay for uh, or other medically needed services uh, that are not part of the original Medicare Part A and Part B. Um, so let's talk about um, getting some help and specifically um, getting some help from the HCA. I'm going to say again that uh, if you're considering making a change, um, the three things that you uh, most want to pay attention to, and they all attach to the HCA, um, is number one, the forms and paperwork. Um, so please be aware of which forms and paperwork. Uh, and as Matt said, there's good help available in person or online. HCA will be available at benefits fairs virtually and in person. All of the questions that relate to things like eligibility. Um, if I leave the group, can I come back again? Can I defer my coverage? All of the questions about dependents, whether they're your children or your spouse, belong to PEB. And all of the uh, questions related to how exiting the PEB portfolio might affect other coverage, like dental insurance, belong to HCA. So forms and paperwork, dependent coverage, other insurances, all of those questions um, go to the HCA and they're making themselves uh, very available in various forms um, to help you. And I don't have um, an easy slide um, that talks about um, how to reach them, but I'm confident we can get that together by the next program, right, Matt? Yep. Um, your second um, authoritative source for help, obviously, is the Medicare agency. This is CMS, or the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. It's the federal agency that manages Medicare, including Medicare Advantage plans. You can reach them at cms.gov or medicare.gov. You can call them at 1-800-MEDICARE, which is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as I said, the medicare.gov website is a great internet resource appreciating not everyone has the facility for using the computer, uh, nor does everybody have high-speed internet access. But again, the folks at RPAC, the folks at WEA, uh, the SHIBA volunteers will be happy to help you if you need help navigating, uh, you know, sort of through web-based uh, technologies. And I'll just say, we'll talk about this some more in the subsequent programs, but if you haven't already created an account for yourself, um, it's worth going out to medicare.gov and creating a My Medicare account for yourself so that you can do things like manage your bills um, and see your own spending and um, specifically accumulate a list of the prescription drugs that you're currently using so that if you're interested in comparing plans and comparing prescription drug coverage, uh, that's a terrific tool. And then finally, um, the individual health plans. So this would be Primera, Regents, Obviously, United Healthcare, Kaiser um, are a great resource. They all have terrific websites, printed publications, video programs. They'll be at the virtual and in person benefits fairs. They are the outlet for specific questions about things like the provider network, prior authorizations, covered benefits, the formulary for prescription drugs, 
uh, managing out-of-pocket costs, how do deductibles work, how does co-insurance work, how does co-pays work. Um, those questions uh, are best served by the individual health plans, um, and they're eager um, to help you um, and uh, are just terrific uh, professional people, um, and we would certainly commend them to you. So Matt, with that, let me just close with a quick review about what we've tried to accomplish here in the first program. And then uh, you and I can look forward to uh, program number two, right? Yes. So we talked about uh, Medicare options for retirees with you know, for medical plan. We did a quick review about options inside the PEB portfolio plans. We talked a little bit about how PEB coverage works with Medicare. And we did a very quick review about uh, to whom uh, you should address your questions about which kinds of topics, and we'll follow up with some contact information for those. And for today, let me just say, here's our contact information uh, for the Office of Insurance Commissioner uh, SHIBA program. We um, do have live answer for that toll-free number, 1-800-562-6900. We live answer uh, between eight to five, Monday to Friday, exclusive of holidays. Um, and we have a terrific group of people that work there. Uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. Um, in most cases, we're gonna connect you with a local uh, Shiba volunteer in your area who are available to help you on the phone, on Zoom or in person. And many of our local sponsors, uh, which is how we refer to the not-for-profit organizations that do the care and feeding of our volunteers, have arranged um, lots and lots of presentations and clinics so you can drop in uh, on a scheduled appointment or uh, reach out to them through their websites. And uh, again, you and I and Lori can provide some uh, links back to all of those resources uh, in between the two programs. And uh, with that, Matt, let me just say, it has been a pleasure to do this program with you today. Um, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Thank you, Tim. And uh, in my wrap up, I'd first of all like to thank uh, Tim. Um, well, I don't know how quite to express it. Uh, for years, Sheba, uh, the, the, the linkage between Sheba and PEB retirees in terms of getting information was difficult to navigate. And Tim has cleared that directly so that we are free as PEB retirees to ask Sheba and Sheba volunteers for assistance. And I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. That is huge because we need help. It's complicated. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to be doing three of these videos. This is the first. And I recommend that you watch all three of them. I am well aware that this was a lot of words this was a lot of talking. This was a lot of information. You take what you like, you leave the rest. I would suggest that you watch it over if you need to, remembering that there's a little button down in the viewer on the lower right that you can actually speed us up by one and a half times. Uh, I use that all the time because we can hear much faster than we can speak. So that, that'll, uh, that will probably make it easier for you. The second, we haven't talked about this, but HCA has a video presentation of their 2024 plans. It's available now. RPEC will be sending the link out to you soon. It's by Ellen Wolfhagen, who has a encyclopedic knowledge of the different PEB plans and has a great presentation comparing the different plans. Um, I think it's helpful to watch our presentations first before you watch hers, but that's your choice. Third, please keep an open mind. I, uh, what I found when I jumped into this was that I had certain set ideas about what the plans in PEB offered and that for me, UMP was the only one, Uniform Medical was the only one that was any good. I found that that wasn't the case. Um, they all have their pluses and minuses. And uh, we'll go into this more next time. Please ask for help. There are going to be benefits fairs. You can call all these different, different agencies. Uh, and you are not alone. So don't just stop because it's overwhelming. That's the time to pick up the phone or go to a benefits fair. 
and help us break through that um, break through that mental logjam, which I certainly had when I was doing this. With that, we look forward to uh, the second installment of this um, these presentations, where we're going to go more deeply into the different PIB plans and uh, what they offer. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to Tim, thanks to RPEC, thanks to Sheba and uh, WEA Retired, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Bye, Matt. Thank Bye. you all.